Welcome back to EV Swap. So uh, we're doing a little bit more progress on the Nissan pickup truck. So let me show you what I've been up to. So as you can see, the bed is tilted. And it's just being held with that piece of steel. But look at all the space we have. And the tilt mechanism that the high schoolers did back here. I uh, started painting that with a rust converter and I ran out halfway. But it's a really clean bed, like there's really no rust besides the surface rust back there. Otherwise it's a clean frame, clean chassis, like everything's good to go. So that's a tilt function. It's super cool. Like <laughs> it's just the cooler it gets, the more I look at it. So um, I got it on its wheels. I got some air in the tires a little bit so it's easy to roll around. And I cleaned it up. I um, washed off the, the dust and the grime from all the years of just sitting. And I started cleaning up the interior. So like the um, door panels, the dashboard, uh, everything's just kind of cleaned up now. So um, you can see behind the seats, there's a little bit, some room for storage cubby back there. But uh, yeah, this is just a little, little pickup truck. So basically, we started to finalize the plan for the truck. Uh, so we purchased a Nissan Leaf. Sounds like we might have some company coming over. Yep, two F-16s. A little bit ago, there was a couple that flew like probably a thousand feet above the ground, super low, just right overhead. So what was I saying? Okay, so we bought a Nissan Leaf. It's a 2019. It's I, I will confirm when we get it, but uh, based on all the spe specs, the VIN number and stuff, it's a 40 kilowatt hour. And uh, I think it's 150 horsepower. What is that, 110 kilowatts, something like that. So we have a Leaf. We have to go pick it up. Tomorrow I'm gonna go pick up that Leaf up at Copart. And uh, we got a pretty good deal on it. It was actually, about the same price that I paid for my 2017 with a 30 kilowatt hour um, a couple years back when I built my Land Cruiser. So we got a nice new Leaf, 40 kilowatt hours. We're gonna use the Resolve EV controller again with that. And we're gonna transplant all the guts here into this Nissan. So you can see we got a lot of space here. Now it's pretty tempting to say, well, let's put the battery there. but you gotta account for the drive shaft because the drive shaft's gonna come here in the middle and it's gonna cut this area basically in half. So depending on the size of the Leaf battery, we may be able to fit it here on like one half or the other half. The, uh, the differential is actually offset to the passenger side a little bit more. It's not dead center, which kind of sucks because the logical place would be put it here on the driver's side, but that's where the driver sits and ideally you would have it on the opposite side so it could counteract the driver's weight and be a little bit better side to side weight balance so we're just gonna have to see the battery may end up being too big for this space anyway and we're gonna have to split it into two halves um you know electrically connected but uh cells on this side cells on that side so we're just gonna have to play that one by ear uh, when we get the car and start designing the battery box also the fuel filler is up on this side over here so it would be cool to have the charger maybe we can put the charger here or, or somewhere in the back so that the charge port would be there where the plug goes otherwise i think it would make sense to keep the charger here under the engine bay because we're gonna have a lot of space up here the transmission i think is going to come to about yay and then we'll have the nissan leaf motor which will come out to melt yay and then uh, there'll be space in the front for the charger or the charger can go over here or it uh, looks like the 12 volt will go here so it'll probably fit there and we want to have a little bit of weight in the front you can see the suspension is really high in the front and that's because the engine the transmission are out so it's really light um, so we want to add a little bit of weight back into the front also you can see it's got torsion bars which i think is awesome a lot of people hate them but i i'm a big fan um you know as long as you're not doing anything too crazy, rock crawling or, or racing or anything, but just a street vehicle, they work just fine. So one benefit of these is they have little adjustment screws underneath and you can tighten or uh, loosen the 
torsion on the torsion bar. So we'll be able to get the ride height down where it is stock, um, just with a couple turns of the screws. So that's gonna be really easy to, to get it set at the right height for everyday driving. So like I said, the paint is pretty dang good shape. The clear coat's peeling here and stuff, but um, you know, Dave, he's not vain. He doesn't really care about that. He just wants a really functional, you know, truck that's gonna work and, and do things, you know, do jobs and, and be functional and get good range and good power. So it's gonna have 150 horsepower, which with electric vehicles, um, 150 horsepower is a lot like in a truck this size. You got to remember that it's basically 150 from zero to your max speed. Whereas with a gas truck, when you're setting off at those low RPMs, you know, it's, it, it's not making anywhere near the peak power. The peak only comes in around 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM. Um, so when you're below that RPM, you have much less horsepower. Whereas with an electric vehicle, you have that 150 horsepower the entire way. Uh, and all, of course, no shifting too. So there's no delay when you're shifting gears. So it's gonna scoot, it's gonna be quick with 150 horsepower, um, like maybe zero to 60 in eight seconds or something like that, maybe lower. So we'll have to measure that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a tilt bed for the battery. Uh, we're gonna add some pneumatic struts I think um, to just help lift it and not to actually be a dump truck. Um, I don't think that we have the ability to do that unless we get like hydraulic system and hydraulic rams and stuff. But I think that's out of the question for the, the goals that Dave has. So I started putting it back together a little bit. I got the mirrors on, I got the tail lights installed, cleaned it up. So now we're ready to get that Nissan Leaf in here and take all the parts apart and put it in here. Also, we got the motor adapters ordered from Brat Industries. So hopefully they'll be here in another week or so. Um, and that's again, just to mate to the bell housing of the manual transmission. Uh, we do need to get a shifter for this guy. There's no shifter included. And um, we're gonna have to come up with some custom mounts to hold the whole thing in the vehicle. But um, we're, we're making some progress. So uh, just a couple of updates around the shop. You can see my Land Cruiser 40 series frame. I got the axles under it. I got the axles sandblasted and covered with the Pour 15. And I uh, got the leaf springs and some new hangers on there. So that's good to go. It's now a roller, as they say. And some sad news at the EV swap shop. My trusty Ego scooter has a flat tire back here. And I think the front tire's leaking air. Um, there's some construction. You can see I've been running through some mud. And I think I hit something, a rock or a nail or something and punctured my tires. So the Ego stu scooter is down for the count. I'm sad. I use this thing all the time, almost every day. If I'm running to some of the stores around here or I can go home for lunch or things like that, but it's down for the count. So that's kind of the updates. Let's go down to Copart and we'll pick up that leaf we bought. All right, here we are, we're at Copart. We got the trailer hooked up and we're gonna pick up the leaf. Let's go see what it looks like. All right, I'm sitting here at the Copart lot. It's so sketchy with these huge front under loaders just driving within like a foot of your truck. Anyway, I've been here for like an hour, but the dude says he's finally gonna go get my leaf and bring it out. So we're just gonna wait for that to happen. All right, here it is.
right, there she is. Let's get her strapped down. She's smashed up on the front, but uh, everything still looks intact for the most part. This side looks good. The key's in there. All right, let's get her strapped down. the dash came alive when I started opening the doors and it turns on and it's got warning lights or whatever but malfunction <laughs> but look I can shift it into drive I can shift it to reverse oh and it drives too it's it's a runner and it says we got 98 miles at 60%. So that equates to, I think, a 40 kilowatt hour battery. So the battery hasn't been removed and it hasn't been downgraded to like a 24 kilowatt hour like the scammers like to do. Sweet, we got a running leaf, hell yeah. All right, let's get it back to the shop. All right, we got the leaf, you can see it back there. And like I said, I don't know, it's super loud and dusty and stuff, just wanted to get on the road. But yeah, it looks like a good car. Uh, just about fully functional, except for the obvious problems. And um, like, that's amazing that it started up just like that. I didn't need a jump pack or nothing. Um, so hopefully that means some of the more important electronic connections and wires haven't been destroyed. Um, underneath, it looked like there was still a good gap between where the bumper crushed in and like the motor, uh, the PDM starts. Uh, it looks like the charge port survived, um, so that's good. And it drove, it, it would drive forward in reverse, which is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I've only had that happen once before. And the uh, one that did drive needed a jump pack to get it started. So this is <laughs> the best leaf so far. Um, so that's awesome, 40 kilowatt hours, about 150 horsepower um, yeah let's take it back to the shop and we're gonna start ripping it apart and uh, putting all the stuff in that pickup truck let's get to it okay we're back here at the EV swap shop and we've got the leaf so I think I'll be able to drive it off the trailer and into the shop but we need to push this guy outside and make some broom and then we're gonna start pulling the battery and stuff out of it so uh, let's get out of
All right, we got it in. Thing still drives fine. It just scrapes the bumper. I decided to back it in because there'll be more room out here on the front to get the motor out and stuff. But dude, it, it freaking drives just about fine. Like we could pull out some of this damage and get a new front end body panels on it and it would be a perfectly fine car. But we're not, we're gonna rip it apart. All right, let's get started. Oh, we got, oh, it's just some water or something in there melting out or the steam coming off the, the headlight. All right, thanks again for watching EV Swap. We're gonna get this Nissan torn apart and we'll show you the process in the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and tell your friends because we're gonna get this little Nissan pickup truck fully electrified before you know it. Thanks for watching.